And Project Snowbird was a project put into place to function as a cover project for Project Red Light, which was to uh, manufacture by conventional means disc-shaped craft, uh, usually by ducted fan uh, engineering, uh, which is very easy to do, and fly that in front of the press. And they showed it on newsreels and all kinds of things. And that was to debunk the, the whole theory of flying saucers. So it's extremely important to me that the public understand that the Snowbird document was a disinformation project put out by William Moore uh, in his capacity working for the secret government, um, and that the letter that we have mm -hmm. stating that it has been declassified proves that. Okay, but uh, what is it that's in the Snowbird document, first of all, that uh, we were led to believe was supposed to be true, but now you're saying it's untrue, Bill? How about you, Clifford? Do, do you concur what Bill Cooper is saying, that this has been a, a disinformation-type document? Well, I'd like to get a copy of the, of the letter that says it's been declassified. Well, well let's that would be some ammunition. I no, 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 no. I Forget the declassification of the letter. My question to you is this, very seriously now. Bill Cooper has been talking about this now. I'm flashing back on it. And he said, and I've heard this before on the air, that this is disinformation-type document that's been issued to us for us to believe. Are you saying, I just want to understand this, because what Bill Cooper asked you, that you received this document under different circumstances other than what Bill Cooper assumed you received them. I under. received this document under different circumstances. Okay. Now, Bill, what do you think of that aspect of it? Is that change at all in your mind? Well, if he, if he saw that as a part of his official duties while functioning officially in his duties in right. the United States Army... Yeah then we have to go back and re-examine the document. Well, that may be the important thing. That's what I'm trying to get it to myself, gentlemen. And then I would have to re-examine what I saw. Of course. If he got it outside of his normal duty, right. then I would say that it was part of the disinformation okay. campaign, and somehow it was gotten to him uh, as a part of that. So maybe we... Now, I want Clifford to understand that I support him 1,000%, and I am not pinging on him uh, at all. Right. What I'm doing is pinging on this document right. in the way that it has been put out as being uh, authentic, mm -hmm. and, and it actually uh, is not authentic in any way, shape, or form. Okay, so we, that's, where, that's where we're at, and all the listeners out there have heard you talk about this before, Bill, and now we're getting right down to the nitty-gritty of the snowbird. Tell us, Clifford, is there truth to this document as far as you... Yeah, how do you feel about it? I firmly believe there's truth okay. to the Snowbird document. So now, I think what has to be left here, Bill, is you mentioned that you're going to give me a new phone number. You're going to call the office, right? Yeah. yeah okay. Uh, in the interim, uh, if uh, Clifford uh, calls, I can give him... I, I, if you call me, Bill, I please at least... Bill Cooper, how about telling us, or not only me personally, but the rest of the listening audience out there, I'm sure they're going crazy, what is in this document that is causing so much controversy. This was a document that William Moore, uh, Stanton Friedman, and Jamie Chandray supposedly received also on 35-millimeter uh, film, and uh, they developed this film and blew this up and uh, put this out to the UFO community as documents that were leaked from the secret government to show them what was really happening. What was really happening? Well, uh, what was really happening is that they were being uh, used as a part of the contingency plan called Majestic to text, test the public reaction to supposedly genuine documents that were really false to the presence of aliens on the Earth, oh, okay. which is an ongoing concern of the secret government and the CIA as right. to whether it's going to cause panic and mm -hmm. whether the stock oh. market's going to crash. Well, that makes sense. Things. So in other words, what you're saying is this document came out uh, this is after the initial feelings of theirs going back a number of years, and we do not want to, you even agree with that from the beginning, Bill, if I'm not mistaken, that we should not tell the people about this information because they may panic. Right. Okay, so this is, this is a document now that has surfaced uh, yeah. over the years. Let's see if there's been a change. Well, well one of the things that I like distinguish that. this document is on the front of it, yeah. the first page, and it says Project Aquarius, and down right. at the bottom, it's on the left-hand side, it's mm -hmm. got a picture of a quarter. And on the second page, it had uh, Project Aquarius. And on the third page, it had Project Snowbird, Project Sigma, mm -hmm. uh, Project, uh, you know, uh, yeah, but I mean, different, to different things. But to simplify it, it, it's come out to the point where it's been uh, more up to date. And, there's, uh, and this Project Snowbird is to see if the public, um, uh, what their reaction would be. It, it functions as the uh, same purpose as the so-called Eisenhower briefing document, uh -huh. which first disclosed... Uh, so-called 
MJ-12, mm -hmm. which in the entire briefing document did not contain anything right. that n anyone in the in the research community didn't already know, except for 12 names. Okay. Which All could right. have been on, on uh, the, the so-called... We have Study a committee. But gentleman. One thing I want to make very clear yeah. is William Moore, when I, I duplicated the documents that I saw, down in the left hand corner where there was a picture of a quarter on his documents, I put the picture of a world. Now he came out and claimed that uh, my reproduction of the documents were phony because I had to shown a world and he said I copied it and, and the, 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 the real picture showed a quarter. And he said that he put the quarter in there so that when the negatives were blown up, they could bring the size of the document to the correct size by, by comparing the quarter in the negative to the quarter on the picture. Okay. What he did not realize when he said that publicly is you only do that if you're the one who took the picture. Do you understand what I'm saying? In other words, that was an omission that he's the one that took the pictures on the 35 millimeter film that were mailed to them that they subsequently blew up and they used a quarter to compare to the quarter on the negative to make sure that the documents were blown up to the right side. Okay, uh, Clifford, you're sitting out there in Roswell, New Mexico. I, I have to ask you, and, and I don't want to uh, uh, try to read into anything, what is going through your mind right now? Well, first of all, the second page of the document that was released is not the second page of the document in which the Snowbird document appears on. The Snowbird document is page 10 of a 10-page document. And I have one, two, three, four, nine. Aliens did exist and the government was aware of it. Um, I saw photographs of alien beings that autopsies were being performed on. Uh, there was one particular photograph of three aliens that had been shoved up against what appeared to be a white tile wall in a rather confused state and photographed. There were photographs of uh, a recovered disc, uh, several photographs of what appeared to be uh, alien-type technology, uh, bi biological photographs, micro microphotography of tissue samples, autopsy reports, uh, technical reports, and that kind of thing. Well, that answers my question. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yep. All right, Bill. That's a good answer. Uh, I think it kind of... Uh Fill him in. Let's Thank see you. who's next. All right, Bill. That's a good answer. Uh, okay, you are next on the Billy Goodman Happen. You have a question for Billy? English. Yeah, uh, first I'd like to ask you, Billy, uh, how come we don't hear the news on the hour uh, anymore? Uh, because we have a new system where there's no news available. Okay. Okay, uh, Mr. English, uh, did you hear last night's uh, program uh, about this the man who supposedly talked to the Pallades? Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, are you referring to the Billy Myers case? Well, he, that's brought up. He's, he's referring to a, a gentleman by the name of George Green. Uh, I have heard the name before, but I'm not all that familiar with, uh, with, the, uh, with the incident, no. Oh, it was last night, Billy Goodman's happening. Uh, uh, this man says he talks to the Pallades, and we're going to have Armageddon. Uh, and these books called The Journal that are uh, not even in existence at the Psychic Eye bookstore. Uh, well, I, I really don't know uh, anything about that, so I can't really comment with any amount of authority. Um, if he says we're facing Armageddon, then I would I would venture to guess that possibly sometime within the next couple hundred years we may be. Well, what's your feeling on that, uh, Mr. English? Well, my own personal feeling is is that we, as a as a group of beings uh, on 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 the planet Earth. We have to come a long way and do a lot more than what we have been doing in order to get our house cleaned up and in order. But I'm not ready to, uh, I'm not ready to uh, say the end of the world is, is right around the corner. And why can't you just go visit your wife and children when you couldn't get in touch with them on the phone? Why couldn't you physically get in your car and go, go visit them? <laughs> well, they live in England still, as far as I know. But you can't go to England and just uh, go and get a rent a car and go visit them? No, I can't. I've tried several times to get a visa to travel to England, and it's been denied. Oh, is that so? Yeah. Okay, uh... Well, Freaky stuff going on here. Okay, I'll let somebody else get on the line. Thank, Thank you, you for the call, sir. All right, bye-bye. Some freaky stuff going on here with this man's life. He came and get a visa 
to, to, to go to England. Freaky stuff going on oh, here. Uh, let's take another call and find out where we go from here. Hi, you're next. The Billy happening. Hello? Yeah. Yes, sir. Got our ex doc here? Oh, yes, our ex doc. Uh, one of the questions I'd like to uh, ask Mr. English is that when I went to England, all I had to have was a passport. Is he uh, restricted from uh, all passports? I cannot get a passport at all. I, I, I can just see RX Doc saying, what? I'm saying the very same thing. You wonder why. How can this possibly be? When I, re when I returned to the United States, my passport was re revoked. And uh, I have filed several times to try and get a new passport, and several times the uh, passport has been denied. And they offer no reason. Uh, Billy? Billy? Hello? Yes, I'm here. Yep, yeah, I'm having a little difficult hearing. Let me ask my questions and I'll listen on the radio. The other question that seems to be missing, which seems to be very important, is uh, he was obviously given a paper to see that he was cleared to see, but what was his response to the report? It seems as if the response, his response to the report, not just his viewing it, is what caused his problem. And, uh, did you, you hear that, Bill? Thing? Yes, I did. And, and Bill, would you do us a favor, speak right directly right into that telephone, because we can't okay, just... Okay, how's that? That's much better. Okay, would you, would you respond to that question? Okay. I, I think he had one more question to ask. Uh, yeah. The other question that I had, Billy, was uh, I have seen uh, one service incident indicated with uh, the, adju uh, the adjutant of an admiral that I knew. Now, three people on a base saw and contacted a UFO, and uh, the next morning all three of them were sent to different parts of the world. But I never heard anything about their family being separated. I would like to know also what the security clearance was of his wife, and I'll bet that she was told a story that uh, something that uh, really kept her from trying to get in touch with you. With that, I'll hang up and listen on the radio for the answer. All right, sir. Thank you for the call. Okay. Right. In answer to his first question, my response after viewing the document and viewing the information was that based on what I had seen, and based on the material that was enclosed in the document, that there was a 90% probability that the information was true. Now, my job was basically to analyze information and assign a probability uh, a probability rating to it as to whether it was whether it was uh, true information or false information. Now, let me point out that all along I've always indicated that there is a possibility that the information that I viewed was fraudulent information designed to be spread. And I've, I've always maintained that. But at the time when I viewed the document and filed my report, I assigned it a probability rating of 90% truth. Hold it. You know, that's interesting what you just said. Someone put it on your desk for you to make a report. Right. Now think of what you just said. That could be the setup from the beginning. Well, it could well have been, and I've always acknowledged that possibility. Hmm. I have always acknowledged that possibility. They could well have been. But all I can do is relate what has happened to me uh, from the time I began to view the document until now. With regard to the other, uh, the other question, my wife had no security rating at all because she was not part of uh, Security Services Command. She was part of Department of Defense school systems. By the way, Bill, th this project Blue Book, is this the uh, and Grudge Report, is that the same thing that uh, Bill Cooper um, has talked about? Uh, well, uh, he has uh, mentioned several similarities between the two. I don't know if that specifically is the yeah, document. He, same papers. That he has seen. Okay. Um, the information I have, there is uh, there are some discrepancies based on uh, uh, several things. What do you mean by that? I mean, are the, uh, the papers you saw, uh, are they the same papers that uh, Bill Cooper has been talking about for well, the past Bill, year? Uh, Bill Cooper says they are. I don't oh, okay. know, I, I oh, don't know I if they are or not. I get it. You don't know for a fact what the papers are. All right. No. Okay. I, I do not, personally, I do not believe that they were the Grudge Blue Book 13 papers. They might have been something else. Okay. Bill English is my guest. It is, but it's you. Albuquerque, New Mexico. 
and he was an investigator for the Aerial Phenomena Research Organization, and he had a case of a lady and a child who apparently were abducted on the roadside as they had observed a cattle mutilation taking place by alien beings. Now, we've been able to substantiate this as being fact because we have reports from uh, Leo Sprinkle, who did a regression, uh, hypnotic regression on the woman and her son, which substantiates that she was taken captive by the aliens and taken to a underground installation of some type. And while she was in the installation, she apparently had broken away from her captives and uh, had taken off uh, down a hallway and wound up in a room, in the room uh, that she described, and I have copies of the original notes uh, that Leo Sprinkle uh, uh, wrote down as he was doing the regression, but apparently when she went in this room, she saw several vats uh, full of an amber-type liquid filled with human body parts. Now, the story goes that Benowitz had this woman in his home, and while she was there, aliens began to contact him through his computer. Uh, I don't know what the exact particulars were, but he uh, apparently had made arrangements with them to uh, uh, view several UFOs out in his backyard and that he was picking up technological da data uh, through, uh, from the aliens through his, his computer. And uh, it's a pretty long and involved story, but he started sending these mm -hmm. reports in, mm -hmm. and everybody thought he was nuttier than a fruitcake. Uh, a lot okay. of people. Now she was referring to someone making uh, changes in there in these reports, though. You know, you know nothing about I that. I don't know anything at all about that. Okay, Bill English is my guest. We'll get back to him and your telephone. Years before in Vietnam. Yes, that's of, true. Of a mutilation case. Um, could you comment on that? And um, I'd like to hear your comments as to whether uh, possibly um, they were aware that you had taken those photographs. And I'll take my answer out there. Oh, good question. Thank you for calling. Well, when I had viewed the document, there were several photographs in there that I had taken while serving in Vietnam. Uh, there was uh, a B-52 bomber that had gone down in Laos, and I was part of a recovery team that was sent in to bring out survivors. Apparently, we learned later that the craft had been attacked by some sort of... of uh, object there was no real clear uh, description of what the object was when we came upon the craft uh, it was in the jungle and it had looked as though it had just been set there uh, there was no crash pattern that there was very little damage to the aircraft at all uh, which was pretty unusual when you consider that uh, the size of a b-52 bomber and the fact that it was fully loaded with fuel and bombs mm -hmm. uh, at the time, we gave it no credence because we didn't we didn't really understand uh, exactly what had taken place. We did comment on the fact that uh, there was very little damage, and the fact that um, the vehicle or the the aircraft had been placed. It looked as though it had just been taken by a giant hand and set into the jungle. Uh, we very carefully blew one of the hatches open. The hatch, all the hatches on the craft were sealed. We went in and we found the crew still strapped in their safety harnesses. And uh, when we released them from their safety harnesses, we found that uh, many of them had been mutilated in the classic sense of the word, what we refer to as the classic sense of the word now. Uh, anuses had been cored out up to the colon. It looked as though a great big cookie cutter had been used just to bore them out. There was no blood within the craft, and with the type of wounds that were evident, you would think that there would be a lot of blood on the floors of the craft. Uh, skin was removed from necks and jaws. The bones were bleached white almost. Eyes were removed. Genitalia was removed uh, with precise surgical uh, precision. What, what we thought at the time was that this was the work of Viet Cong because they were pretty, uh, pretty creative in the kind of stuff that they did, and it was fairly common. We found no survivors. We recovered the flight recorder from the aircraft and dog tags, and we took photographs. I took the photographs, and when we returned to our headquarters in Saigon, these uh, dog tags, photographs, and our report was turned into, uh, into MACV headquarters. And that was the last we saw of it or even thought of it at that point. 
uh, years later while viewing the document, and I must admit that I based a lot of my report on the document on what I had viewed in those photographs uh, with regard to the probability rating. Uh, there were several uh, there were several other items in the report and, and and for the sake of time i haven't i haven't gone into a very deep description of everything but there was quite a bit of stuff about human mutilations uh, uh, abductions relocation camps of, of people uh, who had had a close encounter of the third kind or what was apparently a close encounter of the third kind and this type of thing wow. the, uh, uh, I look back on it now, and, and and I see that there is a possibility that uh, they knew that I had taken those photographs. Uh, I don't know what the purpose was in, in, in allowing me to see the document or to analyze the document. It's possible that they did this because of those photographs. But uh, mm -hmm. at, at this point, it's anybody's guess. Mm -hmm. The thick... Certainly, Plotins uh, were. <laughs> it really does when it comes down to this. Why they put them on your desk? Getting back to your desk, what was your position in the service at that time? What, well, what was, I was your rank? A, I mean, not position, rank. I, I was a civilian at that time. I just, oh. I had just gotten out of the service. Uh, I was a former captain in the Green Beret. I took a European out because my wife was still working for Department of Defense schools. And uh, I got out of the service in Germany, where uh, I met her and we got married. And uh, she took a transfer to England. She was offered a list of uh, places to go, and we selected mm -hmm. England. And when I arrived at RAF Chick Sands with my family, I was a dependent husband, and I went on the job trail. And while I was there, I met an old uh, commanding officer that I had served under while in the Army. Oh, I see. And uh, he was a part of the NSA at the time and asked me if I would be interested in working for the government. Huh. Interesting, huh? Bill English. Fascinating story. Bizarre. Fast. You know, last night was bizarre. Actually, it was awesome last night. It's the word I used last night. I mean, it was unbelievable. And tonight, here you are, separated uh, from your family because you see some papers and it's been 13 years. If you have a question for Bill English, who has a before we get into any more questions, Bill, let me ask you a question. Out of all the UFO researchers, do you have a favorite or somebody that you really feel uh, has done a lot of uh, uh, the most research and has come up with the best answers so far, uh, if that's possible? Well, <laughs> there, there are a lot of researchers out there that I admire. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, among them are Lynn Stringfield. Uh, John Lear is one. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, at one point, uh, Bill Moore, I admired him greatly. At one point, what do you mean by that? Well, over over there's only a problems report, with regards to Mr. Moore, but uh, it's it seems to be fairly common within the UFO uh, field. Uh huh. Uh, I have no personal uh, gripe with Mr. Moore at this point. Uh, he and I have more or less buried the hatchet. <laughs> uh, and not in each other's back, I hope. You know, you know, a lot of listeners tell me, and I get a lot of mail, a lot of phone calls at the office about it. They say that there, there could be too much uh, egotism in this whole thing. Well, unfortunately, there is a lot of it. You agree with that, huh? I, I do agree with it, and uh, unfortunately, uh, I I have to bear some of the blame because I I am among those that when I am attacked, I respond, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it does happen. Okay, we'll get back to more phone calls uh, for Bill English, and hopefully you'll be up next. Matter. Of Hello. Okay, we're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. We had a we had a a, a bad one. Well, you know, <laughs> it happens. Oh, of course it does. Of course it does. You know that. Why did he call me? Why is he upset with you, I wonder? I really don't know, but if he feels that that's the kind of person I am, then he's entitled to his opinion. Yeah. Okay, who's up next? Oh, Gene. Gene and Irvine. Hold on a second. Gene and Irvine. Okay. Let's go out to next? see Gene oh, and Irvine. Hi, Gene. Hello. You have a question for Bill English? Billy Goodman. Yeah. Uh, uh, what, what was his name again? Uh, Bill English. 
Bill English. Bill, can you hear me? I can uh, just about hear you. I can just about. I can just about hear you. Can you hear me now? I can just about hear Eugene too. Your line is always the same anyway. This line from Irvine is always down for some reason. All right, can you hear me now? Uh, a little bit better. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'd like to ask you a question that uh, may open the door here. <clears throat> some years ago, back in '56 and '57, I was stationed in Roswell, New Mexico. Yes, sir. And. Uh, <clears throat> I've been kind of doing some research through the years myself. Now, there was, uh, right after that, I'd gotten out of service. I had gone to work for a company, and uh, one night while I was on duty, uh, I heard a story about a little town here in the United States, someplace. I don't remember what the town was. But apparently the, uh, the town itself had uh, gotten a hold of a, a, an alien, and he crashed UFO, and they had buried the body. And I'm wondering if this little town might be Dulce, New Mexico. I, I don't know. Uh, Dulce, New Mexico, uh, primarily is on an Indian reservation. Uh, the Archuleta Mountains, or the Archuleta Peak, where this base is supposed to be, is, is right smack dab in the middle of a, a military test range and Indian reservation area. Uh, is Dulce north uh, of uh, New Mexico? It's north of Albuquerque. It's in northern New Mexico, yes. Oh, okay. Well, the story that they gave that the alien body was there and some newspaper reporters and their radio station all went out there and tried to get the information. One of the reporters saw the uh, gravestone, which was a, apparently a piece of the craft with some writing on it, and uh, when they tried to pursue this, the town uh, went against uh, everybody and tried to keep everybody out of the graveyard. And then pretty soon, uh, from what they saw, was that the body had been dug up afterwards after the reporters went back out there again, and uh, uh, everything had been removed. And then the, the program se seemed to cease to exist after that. The program had changed. And I never did find out what had happened, what the outcome of the whole incident was. Well, I, I, I won't deny the possibility of something like that happening. Um, the uh, uh, New Mexico and the small towns of New Mexico are very close knit, and everybody knows everybody. Uh, I personally have never heard this uh, before, but uh, it's within the realm of possibility. I'll, I'll give it that much. I don't know. I don't know if it's uh, true or not, but I, I will give. I, I will give it uh, uh, a possibility. Yeah. Okay, Gene. Yes. Anything else? Uh, yeah, there's uh, one other thing uh, I'd like to have t I tried to call last night on the other program, but I think this is a good time to say it now. Uh, if uh, uh, the aliens can pick up these broadcasts, I think we should have like something similar to another star of Bethlehem. If they can, the uh, Pleiades or any other races could uh, uh, let us know by doing something in the heavens to let everybody know on Earth at night... Uh, to let everybody know that this is actually going on, that they are there. Okay. Okay. Thanks for the call. Sure enough. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. There goes Gene Irvine. Uh, my guest is Bill English. Do you have a question for him? I know Bob. Well, yes, we do have a beef, and unfortunately I am not allowed to say anything at this point because the matter is in my attorney's hands, and he is dealing with it. Okay, that's it. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you for the call. Uh, but uh, you have uh, now told the entire uh, West Coast and probably the rest of the world when they, by the time the audio cassettes get out there all over the world that you do have a uh, problem with Bill Cooper. Yes, I do. And you want that known, obviously, because you just said it. <laughs> uh, you know that uh, Bill Cooper is probably uh, uh, one of the uh, best-liked guests on the happening. I, I, I'm aware of that. I mean, he has called in and, and been with us from the beginning. Uh, I, I, I don't know what to say, uh, but a lot of things you said tonight are very similar to what he has said. Yes, I'm aware of that. What, what, so, you know, what, what came first, the chicken or the egg? I mean, what happened here? What, what do you think happened? Well, uh... Can you give us some background? There it comes across your desk. Uh, what year did it come across your desk? It came across my desk in 1977. Uh, okay. Uh, the latter part of uh, June of 1977. Okay. And Bill Cooper, I think, says he saw his papers in 1972. In, yeah, in the early 70s. Right. 
Um, well, what do you attribute that to? Well, uh, I, I have to I have to walk very carefully in this territory oh, okay. at this point. All right. be, be aware of that. All right. And it's not that I'm trying to avoid the issue. It's just at this point, mm -hmm. uh, because of my attorney's advice. It's in, it's in litigation. I understand that. But I, what I'm trying to just say is, yeah. if they were there in the early 70s, then you saw them in the later 70s. I saw them in the mid-70s. Mid-70s. Right. Uh, then a lot of other people have uh, saw them before you saw them, too. That's uh, that's entirely possible. Yeah, right. That's entirely possible. However, um, I will point out that I've been telling the same story since 1977, and um, Mr. Cooper apparently has only been on the scene for not quite two years, two and a half years at this point. Oh, I see. Okay. He, he's relatively new to it then. Uh, uh, yeah. All right. Bill English is our guest. I have never seen a UFO in my life. Uh -huh. Not one. Have you ever talked to uh, any people that you really admire that have told you stories about UFOs? Uh, yes, I have. Okay. Uh, my father. Your father? Oh. My father. Uh, back in uh, the mid-50s, my mm -hmm. father worked as an electronics engineer for Bell Aircraft at Holloman Air Force Base uh, here in Alamogordo. All right. Bill English is my guest. It's. Uh... I think you've stated, or maybe feel that the aliens are mutilating animals and they, apparently they certainly mutilated those people in the plane. Is that right? We, we believe that to be the case, yes. Uh, George Green said last night, he was very emphatic, that they're incapable of doing uh, misdeeds and incapable of interfering with what we are doing. He said it was devil worship and that we have got the technology that's done what happened to those animals. Could you could you comment on that? Because we're trying to get to the credibility of George Green also, and it seems like he may, he may have dropped one right there. Well, well, no, don't don't be too overly critical of Mr. Green. Now, as I understand it, he was referring to Pleiadians. Yes. Okay. Well, now, he also re referred to gray, gray areas, others that, that people brought up that he was not in contact with. Well, we have, we have documents within our database which indicates that there is more than one type of gray alien. Now, we do know from what we have, what we have been able to gather as far as uh, the Pleiadian situation is concerned, that the Pleiadians apparently are not capable of doing that kind of thing, but that does not, uh, does not preclude the fact that there is a, a different type of alien race or a different type of alien gray being that might be capable of doing that. Now, as you've said, we do have the technology to do that kind of thing, but the circumstances uh, under which this type of thing has been found and has taken place uh, is it's almost impossible for us to use the technology that is currently available for reasons. The first being that the size of the equipment and the problem in transporting the equipment uh, would cause. Okay, Jim. Do I have time for one more quick one? Oh, really? Quick, and then hang up. All ahead. right, the plane that you saw that seemed like a huge hand moved it into the jungle, that would give credence to the plane on the moon. Would you like to comment on that, and I'll hang up. Okay, well, thank you, Jim. Well, I, I have seen the story about the, about the bomber on the moon uh, in uh, one of the tabloids. I've seen it there twice, most recently a week ago, uh, a rehash of that, and... Um, I have some serious doubts about that based on a number of things, and the first and foremost being in, in the publication that the, the story was in. Okay, Bill English, let's go out and talk to Pete. Other intelligent life in, in, in the universe, and it's even more difficult for them to accept the possibility of that life having visited the Earth. Uh, from my own point of view, I don't know. Um, I'm torn between taking off and hiding with my family and waiting to see what happens and the possibility of, uh, of going up and, and, and making friendly overtures. But there again, you run into sort of a situation of uh, the old War of the Worlds movie where the, the preacher walked out in front to greet the aliens and was turned into a six-foot-tall French fry. Right. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. Okay, Pete, thanks for the call. Thank you. All right, buddy, bye-bye. <laughs> to a French fry. 
Uh, boy, I have a question. Uh, I just want to touch on this because Jim asked a very, very good question before uh, Bill and you kind of just uh, passed on it. Then I will. I didn't mean to. That's okay. Brief. Yeah, he said, uh, do you think it's possible that the reason there's a feud between Bill Cooper and yourself, uh, that the government is uh, involved with that feud? Uh, no. Okay. All right. Because he asked that question. I was just... Did you see anywhere in the papers that you read that uh, we, talking about us now as humans on this planet, have no souls and that we are containers, nothing more than containers, uh, for the extraterrestrials? I, I, have, I have never seen anything like that, no. But that does not mean that there's information out there uh, that would substantiate that. Well, John Lear is saying that lately. Uh, it's possible. I would have to see John's research material yeah. before forming an opinion. Okay. I was just wondering. Um, because, you know, if you respect him, I was wondering if that's the same thing. Uh, let's go to Unicorn. Unicorn, all right? We'll go to Unicorn. Interesting name. Does he have a horn or something? Hello, Unicorn. Good evening. Yes. For Uncle Milty Cooper. What do you mean, Uncle Milty Cooper? Don't call names. Don't slander anyone. Okay. 13, 13 has pictures in it which were not taken before 72. George so, Green got his prime directive. Prime hold it, hold it, hold it. Who, who are you to come on and say these things, first of all? Identify yourself besides Unicorn. That's not fair to come on and say things that uh, we have no idea who you are, sir. If I ask the captain for a coin check, he'll know who I am. If you ask a who for a what? If I ask the captain that you're speaking to for a coin check, he will know who I am. Captain for a coin check. Do you, do you know who he is, Bill? <laughs> do you know who he is, Bill? I have an idea. Okay. He realizes that I was in some of the same situations that he's been in. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, therefore, Mr. Cooper is dealing from a standpoint of many others. We, at that period in time, were using a certain drug that makes Mr. Bud Hopkins and his regression technique uh, insinuate that the alien form doesn't have the technology that we had at the time because hypnotic regression after one of our treatments produced no results none whatsoever <laughs> and I am afraid that Mr. Green who was on last night's show received his prime directive from Isaac Asimov uh, I, Robot, and Star Trek. The form does exist. It is heavily concentrated in Nevada. The government has full knowledge. And any person that thinks that they can in any way be safe from the government or from the form is really fooling themselves. They have played on misinformation, they'll continue to play on misinformation, and the only intelligent thing to do is to continue to investigate silently. That knowledge will give people the power and the ability. Okay, well, do you have a question for my guest, Bill English? Uh, yes, sir. Mr. English. Yes. Yeah. Um, at what time was your tour? I was there from 1969 to 1971. Okay, class of 72. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, approximately how many people were in your recovery group? It was an alpha team. We were a ten-man team. Okay. Uh, I would say in that case that I would be interested in finding out where I could get in contact with you. Uh, I'd like to talk to you because I, I believe your credibility. You've answered the, the questions that would prove to me that you are one of the few credible ones. Well, I, I appreciate that greatly. Okay, Bill, how could someone contact you without making an advertisement? Uh, well, they can write me at uh, Post Office Box 123. Supposedly channeling this information and getting it off of a shortwave radio set, and she had a copy of my text investigating this for a long time. We've uncovered the whole hoax. Let me ask you this now. If, yeah. if this uh, is true, it's absolutely and, and, true. We find out, and we find out, what can we do? 
Well, the first thing, the man is guilty of malfeasance in every possible way. It's a slaughter to not tell people and give them a chance to... He'll be the argument that it'll be a panic. Okay, now you're charging... I mean, I'm saying, what can we do, though, if we find out it is true? What can we do to avoid I'm it? I'm not a lawyer. I don't think you'll have to have it, because I think you'll be given plenty of calls by conscientious Americans in the legal profession telling you exactly what to do. No, I understand what you're saying. Mainly, let's be humanitarian. Let's for, let for, them know. I know, for, but forget the legal aspect. What I'm trying to say is what can we do to protect ourselves from it? Well, well that it, quake is so big, you'll feel it here, brother, believe me. Right. So if what, you're down in the valley, you'll feel it just like Mexico City did. Yeah. Not because the quake was 200 miles away, but because they're in a lake bed, same so, as you are. Are you, are you bringing this up so that people can vacate the area? Evacuate the area? Is this it? area is in danger down there, but mainly the whole California is in the area. It's the worst quake in history by far. Right. It's never happened anything like this. Right. It's far beyond the million that died in China, the two or three hundred thousand in Japan right. some years back in All Saints Day. This is a real monster, but the monstrosity is that he chose to keep it from the public. Okay. That's unforgivable. It's serious. You've got a great mission, Mr. Goodman. Please don't blow it. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you for the Bye-bye. call. Bye-bye. Uh, you heard it. Check it out. Call your authorities. Try to get to the bottom of it. That's a listener, uh, a very concerned listener that wants the word out there, and uh, we can appreciate that from him. And if you know anything about this or have any inkling, or call your authorities, find out exactly what is going on. Um, it sounds very serious. That is for sure. I want to say hello to a couple of people I met. Um, is that right? I, right? I didn't even think about that. Yeah. When you get a chance, play that tape back, and you'll see it's the same voice. Hmm. And what do you think the call was? Do you think it was a prank? I have no idea. The guy sounded very hysterical. I, yeah. I, I, I'm not a doctor. I can't right. analyze people's emotions. Right. I understand. But he did sound a little hysterical. Okay. All right. Thanks for the information, 606. Yes, sir. Bye. Okay, buddy. The of space, that determines the speed of light. Now, if you have a anti matter involving a UFO that uh, repels the, the mass reaction of space, then you have, and then you got degravitation and a force mm-hmm. field, mm-hmm. therefore you don't have any resistance through space, and the speed then is uh, almost unlimited. In other words, you say there's no heat barrier. There's no barrier. None at all, huh? There, well, I, this could get into a argument. No, I'm not, no, I'm not arguing. I'm, I'm only uh, asking. Then the other point, uh, this time is running close and so forth, and I can talk for hours on the subject matter, but yeah. the other point in psychology involving religion, you're tracking on very sensitive subject matters that I've been interested in ever since uh, I became aware of spaceships, Mothership, uh, the dihedral shape. Hold, hold, hold it, hold it. You're making a statement now, and I, I want to ask you why. Where do you see the correlation between the two? Uh, the dihedral shape wing is from the mothership. Yeah. That was uh, the the 1500 foot ship landed in Russia or was seen in Russia. Mm-hmm. That is the mothership for that particular design. No, I'm talking about where do you see the correlation between. Uh, uh, religion and and the uh, spaceships and all that stuff. Okay, now you say we're ago, touching on. A long time ago, I read the first the book of uh, Sigmund Freud. Studied it for psychological reasons, and I ran onto an expression out of Hindu that says God is nothing, and it shook me because there was no other explanation. Obviously, it remains mute, and I've analyzed that over the years, and I found that that if God is nothing, then God is in space, not in dimension, and therefore space controls dimension. Therefore, God is uh, omnipotent all through space and control and occupy any dimension. And therefore, that is supreme. Space controls all the things that's involved with the dimensional aspects of space. And that's my point of view. Well, all right, you hot potato from third tonight. The Billy Goodman happening has been canceled due to a change in programming from variety to news and sports. We appreciate your listening to KVEG AM 840, North Las Vegas. The superstation KVEG now leaves the air. KVEG now leaves the air. We'll resume broadcasting at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning.